conflict management for church leaders. No matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're going to face conflict. I guarantee you. Matter of fact, we've already faced conflict, right? Everyone has experienced some sort of issue with one another or themselves. Point is this, where do we seek solutions? Well, thank God for the Bible because it teaches us various uh, methods to how to deal with conflict, whether it's relational, which it usually is, or whether it's just finding a solution to an answer. Here are some things that you could take away. Jesus said, if you're dealing with relational conflict, the first thing you should do before you offer your gift or praise or worship or anything to God, you should leave it at the altar and you should reconcile the relationship. Now, when we go about reconciling, it's not about pointing fingers. It's all in the intention of the heart, doing it genuinely and lovingly and saying, hey, you know, this is what bothers me, and I would appreciate it if you can just be a little bit more courteous to um, my, my feelings. Now, if the person listens, wonderful. You've won a fellow believer back. But if they don't, then it's time to up it a little bit and bring someone else to be a witness to and a mediator to it. And if the person still doesn't listen, then the Bible says that we are to treat that person as a non-believer. But if they ask you for forgiveness, you should forgive them seven times. But Paul, the Holy Spirit, is saying, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to win a brother or sister back for Christ, or to reconcile the relationship, do it. Do it with the fear of the Lord in your heart. Because at the end of the day, our salvation is built on what Jesus did, and we should reconcile and and love the person regardless of what they've done and forgiveness is always the key to moving forward in the relationship and usually that's the primary issue is the relationship when we're dealing with circumstances because very rarely are we dealing with them alone we're always in um, groups of people so so that's how we deal with that but if they ask for forgiveness 70 times 7, we should forgive them no matter what they've done. I know it's hard. It is very difficult. We all struggle with it. But it's really down to the point of if we believe what God, what Jesus has done for us on the cross, then we can't hold no grudges against one another. One of the scriptures describes is two people uh, going to the altar. One a Pharisee and one a Sadducee or a tax collector. And he basically says, forgive me, Lord, for I'm a sinner too. And the other says, he thinks he's basically righteous, which he's not. None of us are. None of us can stand before the Lord. None of us can sit at his table and say, why are they here? They don't belong here. None of us have that right. All of us are humbled. All of us have been invited to this um, body of Christ and he is the one who is ultimately in charge so we must recognize that and say we have no authority we are we should be obedient and servants and friends of one another we should be equals master or employee it doesn't matter we're all the same in Christ so be reconciled with your neighbor Whatever it takes, according to the Bible, and then ask and pray. Do everything under prayer. Get God's side, get everyone's side, but not to win. Reconciliation is not about winning. It's always about restoring the relationship. That is the key. Because winning, we just become like the world. So let's show Jesus to the world and not the world to the church.